So in this Cloud Drops, we'll be talking all about PowerShell and Azure Functions. And joining me to explain all about this is Carol Winter. Carol, over to you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, for now, we are going to create a function app. And within that function app, we will have a function that is going to run some PowerShell code. So with that, you can do some magic. You can do some automation based on a, a PowerShell script. So if you want to create a function app, you see that you have the runtime stack is consisting of, for example, you can run .NET, but also Node.js. And very important here, you have PowerShell core. If you are going to um, create a function, you have to know that a function is based on an app service plan. So your function app will be your container that you are going to uh, scale, but also um, going to use for development. And for that, um, within the function app, there will be a function uh, created. So let me just uh, show you how we can quickly create the function app here. So here there will be a storage account that you need because all the files will be on the, on the storage account. You can uh, choose for the consumption plan that will be serverless. So you are only going to be built when you uh, run the function mm -hmm. and application insights will be enabled so you have monitoring in place and then you click create and the function app will be uh, created what i've done already together with chris we've created a new function app and within that function app we have created two uh, new functions so let me just quickly show you if you have your function app in place when you click on new function you can choose for an HTTP trigger. So a trigger is something that will fire up the uh, function. So that's very important here. You can have an HTTP trigger, but also an, uh, a storage account trigger. So when a file is going to be placed on a storage account, then you can do some uh, PowerShell script, but also .NET. You have seen the runtime stack there. And then you also have output binding. So the output can be, for example, that you have a trigger that will place a, a file on a storage account. You do something with the file, and then you have an, an export of a file or something else that you are going to place on a different storage account, for example. So here we have created an HTTP trigger and also an event grid trigger. So Chris, um, uh, let me sh just show you the the creation of the HTTP trigger here. Mm. Do you have any questions yet? No, I think just the observation to say to people here as well, sometimes these Azure functions are called either uh, event-driven architectures or uh, reactive programming. And if you hear any of those terms, they all relate to this kind of model here. You're not you know, waiting for something to come in and then polling all the time. It's that event comes in, you react to it. That's kind of what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So for that, we have um, very important here, where are, where are you going to place your PowerShell code? So in the run.ps1 file, there you can put your own PowerShell code. And here you can see it's just a simple uh, PowerShell command that is taken in some parameters where it's going to query the, the request string and then have the name on it and take that, put that in a parameter, and then uh, create a body parameter with some text in and then and the, the name parameter. And then it's going to have a push output binding. So like I explained, the output binding is going to be just an HTTP status code of, of 200 with OK, and it's going to uh, show you the body. So if I show you here just, um, we are going to test the function now. So we are going to run it. And uh, the response will be this string here. Excellent. So that's simple HTTP trigger. But what if we want to do something more? Mm -hmm. uh, for that, I have created an event grid trigger where I have put some PowerShell code in also that is going to add an extra tag to a resource group that is going to be created. So this event grid um, is going to look at my subscription. There has been a topic created that whenever something has changed or created in the subscription, then this code will uh, fire up. 
And for that, it will look at tags and one tag very specific. So if I have a tag with environment name um, and value development or production, it's going to add some cost center tag. So for that, I am using the set AZ resource group um, PowerShell command. And very important here, before you can use the AZ module, you have to change something in your uh, function app itself. So for that, we have to go to app files. And within app files, you will see that you have uh, not only your host.json file, where the runtime environment and so on is going to be specified, but also your requirements.psd1. And if you want to use an AZ module or so a specific AZ module or something uh, something else from the PowerShell gallery, you can specify here and then it will be loaded once your function app is going to be um, started. So for that, whenever you have a function that is using PowerShell code uh, with the PowerShell AZ module, you have to specify this here. Don't forget to just restart your function app if you are changed or if you have changed that app file. Okay. And for now, um, we just um, showed you the code here. Um, one very important thing we have to mention here is that we already created a system assigned managed identity because we need some, uh, yeah, we need some RBAC roles that have uh, permissions to change something in my subscription or to my resource group. So for that, we have a system assigned managed identity that is having the contributor role. And with that, um, they can change some tags or they can add some tags to the, to the resource groups. Uh, so for that, Chris, I don't know if you have any questions. No, it all makes sense. And I think, um... <laughs> Just for anyone listening who's maybe come from a .NET background or Node or similar, um, the difference here with PowerShell is it's more of a scripting language, so it's not pre-compiled. So that yeah. step there with the requirements, uh, PSD1, uh, it's effectively saying these are the dependencies we need for this script to run. So the, rather than having those pre-built and compiled as assemblies to use, that's the way that it works here with the PowerShell core approach. Yeah. That's correct. So I've created in the meantime um, uh, with my PowerShell command new AZ resource group, mm -hmm. a new resource group um, with the tag environment and a value of development. So we should see that the um, that the event grid trigger is going to be fired up, and then an extra tag uh, with with name cost center and a specific value based on on the development or production environment is going to be added to my uh, resource group. Sure. So if you are going to look back to the um, resource group that I've just created, we should see that now the cost center tag has been added. So that was it. Very quick demo, Chris. I hope you liked it. Absolutely. I think it really shows the power of PowerShell Azure functions coming together. You don't need to be a classic .NET developer or a Node or a Python developer. Even if you've been doing your PowerShell to manage your servers, for example, you too could become an Azure functions developer. So Carol, great session. And thank you for joining today. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.